So I've been thinking about storage, my storage needs in particular. And what I want to look at today, and I've looked at it before, I'm going to look at it again today, and that's TrueNAS Core. And the reason I want to look at it is because of iSCSI, SCSI over IP. Let's have a look at that and see what we can come up with. So I'm going to run through the install of uh, TrueNAS Core. I've looked at TrueNAS before, but I looked at Scale, which is based on, on Linux, and, and this one is based on FreeBSD, I believe. So let's have a quick look. Yeah, there you go, 13.1. So that's cool. So let's get this installed. We're going to in install it to the internal SATA drive. And you'll see that I've got two disks. One is a DA. Now, this mini PC that I'm using, for some reason the MVMe or the M.2 port doesn't seem to be working because it doesn't show up, which is really annoying. I'm hoping that it's a dead drive rather than the M.2 port. So anyway, we'll have an install of this. So let's get this installed. Yeah. Right, so it's installed in the base OS. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Let's reboot. Take out the USB. Yeah, so this is probably going to be a two-parter. We'll get it set up and, and import the disks and all of that first, and then we'll see what happens. Because you get the feeling that getting iSCSI set up is not going to be straightforward, but shouldn't be too difficult either. So there it is, DA0. That's the USB disk. Going to upgrade the processor in this at some point. Unless the uh, M.2 port doesn't work. That would be really annoying if it doesn't. One of the reasons I wanted this model, we shall see. Right, so it's setting up the plugins. Done. Syncing all disks complete. EM0 up. And we're on the same IP address as when I checked it out earlier. And that's good. Right, so let's get this keyboard and mouse out of the way. Flaming hate it. <laughs> and let's bring up a web browser. There we go. Right, so there's my Chrome browser. So let's get installed. 165, and that should be true. That's excellent. Get logged in. So here we go. Four threads, yeah, CPU, G46600T. Like I said, it's, it's literally only a, a um, Pentium. It does support virtualization, but I wouldn't want to try that on this. So let's have a look at our storage. Let's... Um, the dupe is off, yeah. Now, see, that's interesting that it doesn't allow me to delete that pool and start again, but that's fine. So we, we've got our pool set up, and there's the disk. I just called it iSCSI just for this. There you go. It's an unknown. It's not. It's a Western Digital VMware snapshots. Go away. Right. So, yeah, there's my pool. It's got a file system on it. Bug all used, and it's a 500 gig which shows up as 445 once formatted. It's compressed and a massive compression ratio at the moment. Sharing. Let's have a look at block shares. So here we go. Let's, we're just going to keep this as defaults, I think, because I don't think we really need to worry about too much. We're going to leave it with no authentication at the moment. Now, we'll probably go back and look at this at another point. So... Discovery group, yeah, IP address, any, and submit. So there we go. It should be listening, and that should be the IQN. Let's have a quick look on my Windows machine, because this is just basic setup. I just want to see if it works. Okay, right. So let's have a quick look, shall we? 
So if I do a iSCSI initiator and put in the IP address of my free NAS, why is it boinging? Connection failed. Why is that? Okay, I had to replace that disk, that Western Digital disk, it had failed. So let's try this with a, a Seagate drive. Luckily, I have plenty of them. <laughs> uh, let's give it a go. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start the iSCSI service, start it automatically, go to sharing, and we're going to do the wizard. So we'll call this... Um, data, just so that we don't get confused. Uh, not a file, device. Create new. Interesting. All right, okay, create new. None. None, and we want it on that IP address. Any, any, any. Let's see what happens. Let's save that. Let's restart that service just in case. And just quickly check out the pools. No pools. Interesting. I wonder if I had to create a pool first. 148.86.165. Quick connect. Connected. Let's check, shall we? Disk management. It's not there. Hey, wait a minute. What is that? What is disk five? Is that it? So we got C, D, E, F, and H. What's going on here then? And S, which is a I think this is it, you know. Let's have a look. Let's change it to on where. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's transfer something to it because if that's it, it should be around about 85 ish megabytes per second. So let's grab a, what's the biggest one I've got? Yeah, let's put Windows 11 on it. And I think that's it. My big storage, my two, yeah, that's it. That is definitely the uh, iSCSI. That's not a bad speed, you know. I thought it would be a lot slower than that. Well, it's done much one, Okay, so is it really have been that easy? Right, so if I go to storage, add a pool, create a pool, there's no disks. Why is there no disks? There isn't nothing there. 
create a new pool. There is no disks. I know that's interesting. So I can't do snapshots on it. Even though that's set up as an iSCSI target, and it is, well, there's actually two, but that's... I oh, know what I want to do. I want to delete both of those. That's really strange. Really strange. Wow. Well, that speed dropped, didn't it? <laughs> what I might do off camera is just reinstall TrueNAS clean these disks completely see what happens because that's really poor and it wasn't just a minute ago <laughs> yeah that's quite strange it's working, but it's very strange. If I could set that up on a, a, a Z pool, that would be much better because then I can do snapshots and back it up. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be my final configuration anyway because that's only 500 gig. Obviously, I'd like a bit more than that because what I want to be able to do is is back up all my files for um, for these videos because at the moment, I'm having to... to, to delete them every now and then and that's not ideal is it I, I want to keep it all and be able to reference it now obviously if uh, some data storage provider wants to come along and offer me a sponsorship that would be great I'd be very happy with that would love a store in Ada. so 45 drives if you're listening please by all means <laughs> send me a store in Ada that I can play around with because I'd love to put I'd, what I'd really ideally like to do is, is change it from TrueNAS to just vanilla FreeBSD. And obviously, if I've got a configuration file that I can work from, that would be my way forward. Not that iSCSI is particularly difficult to set up on FreeBSD. I've been playing around with that. Not quite there yet, but it's almost there. And I'd like to do that, especially on a, a mini PC like this, where the, the power consumption is like a couple of watts, where it is a bit more than that. It's about 20 watts. But yeah, that, that would be advantageous for me i would like that a lot and with a storinator i could set up some virtual machines and in fact that's probably what i would do i would run i don't know maybe proxmox on it set up a, a vm of freebsd and, and a couple of others and do it that way I'd, I'd like that that would be quite good to me very helpful so anyway off camera i'll probably re reset this up i just can't believe how that changes so drastically very strange Used space, 10 gig. And that's a 5 gig file, but compressed. Right, okay. Okay, it works. Um, my SCSI. It's the way forward for my data needs, I believe. If you find this useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, I'll, I'll do an update to this when I've got it on a ZFS. Uh, Z pool, I think. And just let you know how that runs and, and do some backups and stuff. As I say, I hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up if you do. Don't forget to subscribe and, and see new videos when I release them. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.